What is fire? The fire itself is the result of a chemical reaction known as combustion, where fuel and oxygen react with one another and atoms rearrange themselves irreversibly. For this to occur, the fuel must reach its ignition, temperature, and combustion will continue if there is enough fuel, heat, and oxygen. Phase of fire. There are four stages of fire, which are incipient, growth, fully developed, and decay. 1. Incipient. This first stage begins when heat, oxygen, and a fuel source combine and have a chemical reaction resulting in fire. This is also known as ignition and is usually represented by a very small fire which often and hopefully goes out on its own before the following stages are reached. Recognizing a fire in this stage provides your best chance at suppression or escape. We can confirm that the fire is in its incipient if the flames are small and are not widespread, the smoke still allow visibility in the room, and the heat emitted from the flame is moderately low. Another important characteristic feature of an incipient fire is its liminality or uncertainty. It is at a point where it can either extinguish and disaster is adverted, or it can establish itself and begin to spread. Whether the fire in the incipient stage is extinguished has to do with the factors such as the vicinity of other flammable fuels, the fire's access to oxygen, and whether people are nearby who can extinguish the fire. An incipient fire can usually be extinguished using household fire safety equipment such as fire extinguisher or fire blanket by a trained user. The fire brigade should be called immediately and people should leave their house. Examples, a candle that has just tipped over and flames have just started to trickle onto a table. Whether or not there are other flammable objects on the table may impact whether this fire takes off and enters the growth stage. B, a cigarette has dropped onto the couch the couch is beginning to smother, but the person who dropped the cigarette still has time to smother the fire to prevent a catastrophe. C. A stove catches fire due to an electrical fault. The stove's fail-safe is triggered, the fuse blows, and the fire extinguishes on its own. D. A wild fire ember has drifted ahead of the fire front and landed in a backyard, lighting a few leaves where it landed. Girls. The growth stage is where the structure's fire load and oxygen are used as fuel for the fire. There are numerous factors affecting the growth stage including where the fire started, what combustibles are near it, ceiling height, and the potential for thermal layering. It is during the shortest of the four stages when a deadly flashover can occur, potentially trapping, injuring, or killing firefighters. We can identify if the fire is in its growth phase through the following indicators. First, there is sufficient oxygen and or fuel that can support the growth of the flame. A defined layer of smoke above the flame, the temperature in the room increases. Brown stains on window glaze may appear. Cracks in windows may appear. The growth stage is the shortest stage of the fire where the flame spread exponentially. It is incredibly dangerous and people need to be well and truly evacuated from the building. At this stage, people may be trapped in a building and require a fire escape ladder to get out. The growth stage often ends when a flashover occurs. A flashover is a moment in a fire's life where it has generated so much heat, usually around 1150 degrees Fahrenheit, that the fuels in the fire's vicinity catch fire spontaneously. During a flashover, you will often see a flash where the fire spreads extraordinarily quickly, engulfing an entire room almost instantly. The flashover is incredibly dangerous and can trap and burn people and firefighters in the home. Fully developed. When the growth stage has reached its max and all combustible materials have been ignited, a fire is considered fully developed. This is the hottest phase of a fire and the most dangerous for anybody trapped within. We can identify a fully developed fire by the following indicators. 
Dark and or black smoke. Substantial heat. Blackened window glazing. Visible exterior flames. And flames obscured by the smoke. Decay. Usually, the longest stage of a fire. The decay stage is characterized by a significant decrease in oxygen or fuel, putting an end to the fire. Two common dangers during this stage are first, the existence of non-flaming combustibles which can potentially start a new fire if not fully extinguished. Second, there is a danger of a backdraft when oxygen is reintroduced to a volatile, confined space. How to prevent fire? First is, do not smoke in bed or while you are tired. Smoking materials are responsible for 24% of home fire deaths. 2. When you leave the room or go to sleep, turn off portable space heaters. And further, 24% of residential fire fatalities are caused by heating equipment. 3. If you need to take a call or leave the room, turn off the burner. Cooking equipment is the primary cause of home fire deaths and injuries accounting for 15% of all fatalities. 4. Keep matches and lighters out of sight and reach up children in a high cabinet or locked drawer. Children under the age of 5 are 8 times more likely than older children and adults to perish in a fire started by playing with the heat source. 5. The excess electricity flowing through the objects in your house can always be a potential fire hazard. Things like computers, TVs, game systems, and much more use electricity. Even when they're not on, it means they can always experience a jump or they can just overheat and cause a fire. 6. Flammable items like fabrics, paper, and even hair should always be kept away from excessive heat or flame. You want to keep your hair and your clothes out of the way when you're starting a fire in your fireplace. 7. Monitor the wall outlets in your home and pay attention to any that suddenly don't work. It could be evidence of a problem behind the walls. Look for cords to your electric belongings that are frayed or damaged. This could be signs of problems as well and you don't want to plug them into your electrical system if you know there's a problem already. And lastly, if you keep cooking oil in your kitchen, you want to keep it away from the stove or anything that could potentially spark and cause a fire. The same goes for gas that you might keep in a garage for your car, your lawn mower or anything else. How to be prepared for a fire occurrence? First is install a smoke detector. It is preferable to have one working smoke alarm on each floor and one working smoke alarm inside each sleeping area. Installing both ionization and photoelectric alarms or dual alarms that include both technologies is recommended by the National Fire Protection Association and the International Association of Fire Chiefs. Ionization smoke alarms are ideal for burning fires while photoelectric smoke alarms are the best for smoldering fires. Next is, even if your smoke alarm is hardwired, or has long time batteries, press the test button to make sure it's still working. And lastly, prefer a house fire drill and practice it, asserting that everyone in your home knows what to do if the alarm goes off. What to do if a fire does occur? First is get out as soon as possible. Second is go straight to your meeting location. Choose a meeting spot in front of your house or somewhere visible to responders. 3. Do not return inside for any reason. And lastly, please dial emergency hotlines. Include the entire and exact street name as well as the nearest cross street in your address. Basic response procedure if inside a burning area. Once you hear a fire alarm, evacuate to a safe area right away. If you see fires, pull fire alarms as you exit the area. Inform other people present in the area of the fire that is occurring. If the fire is still small and can be extinguished, use an appropriate fire extinguisher. Usually, normal fire extinguisher do the job, but if unavailable, buckets of water or dump cloth would do. If the fire is already large and is rapidly spreading, immediately find the nearest exit and exit the area. Touch doors first to check if they're warm before opening them. If they're warm, do not attempt to open and proceed to attempt a different route. Use stairways, not elevators. Close all windows and doors that you can reach as you exit. If there is smoke, stay as low as possible. Also try to cover your nose to prevent inhalation. 
Once outside, move away from the exits and assemble a safe area designated by the evacuation plan of the area or by emergency response teams. If outside a burning area, do not attempt to go inside the burning area. Immediately contact the nearest fire station and other emergency response number. Listen and follow orders from the emergency response teams. Organize and participate in a bucket relay. Bucket relay is when people help the firefighters by passing buckets full of water, either to try to extinguish or prevent the fire from further spreading. If you catch fire, do the stop, drop, and roll right away. If you are unable to leave the area unscathed or you have suffered burns, immediately attend to them depending on the degree of the burn.